Hey, how you doing, everybody? It's Phil from New York Rocks, and we're down here at Gibson Guitars. It's down on 54th Street. I got to give a little shout out to that first, and look who we got here. We have no other than Devin Allman, son of Greg Allman. It's an honor and a pleasure to meet you. How you doing, man? Doing great. This is really cool. Now, you are down here at Gibson, and you're, you're going to jam out a little bit, and you have, of course, you got to jam out, man. It's hard, to, uh, it's hard to be a Gibson and not pick up a guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, a lot of legends come through Gibson, of course, starting out with Les Paul, and uh, there's a lot of great influences in guitar. Now, let's talk about some of your influences. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. You know, it's, I try to keep it kind of organic. Uh, you know, I'm really inspired by the likes of B.B. King and, and um, Carlos Santana, Jimi Hendrix, you know. I think at the end of the day, the, you know, the goal of, of lead guitar is to make it talk, you know. So when there isn't a vocal, you know, the guitar kind of becomes that. So, you know, I'm into that. Just make it talk, and, and, and that's, that's the thing. Okay. Tell everybody where'd you grow up and, you know, where you're from now. Tell everybody. Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, in South Texas, and, um, you know, the common misconception is that I grew up backstage or, you know, was handed a guitar, grew up, you know, in the rock star life, and I didn't. I grew up a really normal, you know, kind of suburban kid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's actually cool because it kind of kept me away from some CD crazy right. elements that were going on. Um, but at the same time, it allowed me to kind of forge my own path to music. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, my father and I uh, enjoy a really great relationship today, and, and there's a lot of mutual respect. Nice. Um, but I'm definitely my own man doing my own thing and making my own music, you know. Mm -hmm. well, I'd, like to, I'd like to give uh, a little shout-out to your dad. I know he had just gotten out from uh, having uh, – he had liver problems, and now he's doing a lot – better now I heard he's in recovery that's really great to I want to give you a little uh you know thanks for that you know yeah man I mean they've come a long way uh liver transplants are a huge yeah. huge thing and uh you know it was it was crazy you know um but I, I believe in the donor program now you know so if 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 you think about it and you want to donate just flip your license over and do it. it's a great program I mean I, my dad is alive because of it he has a second chance in life you know because uh absolutely absolutely okay. Now, now you started playing guitar. Is that your first thing you picked up musically? Go ahead. I picked up violin. Uh, it, it, it just wasn't as sexy. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a bit nerdier. Um, and, and it's actually a really difficult instrument. So uh, that was like age 10, whatever. Uh, 13, I picked up guitar. And, uh, man, I, I haven't put it down since. Now, you, ha you had a first album. You had In 2006, you had an album called Torch. That was the first debut album. Yeah. All right, let's talk about that first. Go ahead. Wow. Um, you know, it was it was a crazy time. We were just trying to... Uh, we were already a, a, a pretty hard touring act, uh, but we needed our first record out. I just remember really being rushed because there was practically no budget. Uh, but it was cool, man. It captured a lot of fire and a lot of our stage thing. Um, you know, I'm still proud of that record, even though it was kind of rushed. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. There's, there's an instrumental on there that's kind of a Latin flavor called Mahalo. Uh, we did a, a Bob Marley cover on there, No Woman, No Cry. And mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a cool point in our career. Did you write most of the songs? Off the yeah, I sure did. Um, I, I'm the main writer. You know, I um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just pick up a guitar and hope something comes out. But I'm not I'm not disciplined or regimented. I, I almost have to live some life and just have it kind of come to me. I can't summon it, you know, out of nowhere. So right. I'm weird like that. I'll go six months without writing anything. So. Okay. Well, first album... Guitar, you to play guitar, and now off this new album that's out right now, it's called uh, Space Age Blues, right? There and there it is, right here. I got it right here. Got the cover right here. Now you're playing everything now on this guy. Um, playing all the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the first record, I played most of it, but on this one, I really kind of wanted it to be kind of the arrival of, of Honey Tribe. I, I, I kind of feel that everybody has a debut record. You know, anybody can get one. Um, if you mess up, it's okay. You're forgiven. It's your first one. The second one really kind of separates the men from the boys. And I took my time on it. I concentrated a lot on composition. Um, I think I think some people really expect a lot of burning guitar. There's not really so much. It's it's a bit more of a sophisticated record. 
Um, I really just wanted the songs to stick with people, but I, I did challenge myself to play all the guitar on it and not have any outside influence or, you know, any guests sit in, you know. So uh, that's that means a lot to me that every lick on there is mine. Okay. Now, you, there is one cover. Yes. But go ahead. Talk about that. Go ahead. Yeah, man. I was, we were on a flight to Europe, and I was trying to think of, of what to do because we, we did the Marley song, No Woman, No Cry, on the first record. Right. So I really wanted – So I, I think it's important that we – kind of, you know, give nods to our heroes and expose people that maybe haven't heard, you know, certain soul music or blues music, you know, hear it in a new fashion, you know. So, yeah, we did uh, Stevie Wonder's Sir Duke, and, and instead of the, the horn lines through the song, it's, uh, it's wah-wah guitar, which just kind of goes along with the space age theme of the record. And it was a lot of fun to make, man. Okay, now, the, the plays on the album before on 2006 and the band is it the same band that you have now talk about the guys god yeah gabriel strange just joined us on drums about a year and a half ago um and then george Potsos has been my bass player in honey tribe you know non-stop uh, off and on uh that we've had the band since 99 so i mean yeah these are these are guys that i've known and and, and had in my life and in my band for years and years and years all right so you actually call it devin allman and the honey tribe How'd you come up with that name, the Honey Tribe? Then, well, you know, it's funny. We were, uh, gosh, it was way, it was back in '99. You know, was with a with an ex band mate of mine, and we were trying to come up with a name. And and we knew that the cornerstone of the band was dynamics. Like, you know, we'll bring it down to a whisper, and then we'll rage it up and kick you in the teeth. Right. And so to have a name that really kind of embodied both of those elements, you know, honey is the sweet side of us, you know, the, the real, uh, that's a, a big part of the honey tribe sound, but so is, and that's, and that's the tribal side. So it's like a little of both, you know, and. George Thurgood, like, action. Yeah, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, it goes back all the way back to when people started first picking up guitars and getting pissed off at society. So, um, you know, the sweet and the and the fierce. Wow, cool. Okay. Now, uh, on this album also, you have Huey Lewis on the album. Talk about that. Talk about that song. It's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Could Get Dangerous is the first single, and Huey Lewis was was making an album in the same studio that we were making, Space Age Blues. And it was cool, man. I met him. I told him, you know, I was a fan from back in the day. You know, he was one of the few uh, white singers that made it on the pop charts that actually sang with soul. You know, there's so many jokers out there, you know, during the 80s especially when there's the one-hit wonder pop. And he sang with soul, man. And and he was a great cat, and he was a cool hang. And um, he came in the room and, and just fell in love with our album. And he asked us to be on the album, which wow. was great. You know, we didn't like go and say, hey, man, we, you know, we didn't bug him. He was just like, man, it's a cool record. Can I play on it? And I was like, of course. I, I have the perfect song. Everybody digs, man. Huey Lewis, man. The sound is great. Yeah. Like, uh, like sort of like the fabulous Thunderbirds and Jay Giles. I love those guys, you know. Totally. Well, the, the thing that a lot of people don't realize with Huey Lewis is that everybody thinks he's kind of a poster boy for the 80s, which, right. of course, he kind of was. Mm -hmm. um, but he's a bona fide, legitimate badass on harmonica. Right, like, right. just a bad, like, not just, oh, he plays pretty good. Yeah. No, he will rip you apart. He will yeah. barbecue you. And uh, he killed that track, man. There's not too much of that these days, and these days, and they should be, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. uh, you know, rock and roll started from the blues, you know that, right? So. I know it very well. <laughs> I know it very, very well. All right, cool. All right, so with uh, with that, you got very interested in sci-fi and, you know, space and stuff like that. And, you know, I know you were from the early 70s. You know, you were born in that period. What were your influences with space and, you know, like Star Wars and all that stuff? Go ahead, talk about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think, you know, my, the first film I ever saw in a theater was Star Wars. Right. And if you remember how that, that movie starts, you know, it goes black and the stars are out and then you see that huge cruiser come out like yeah, almost yeah. over your head, you know, <laughs> shooting lasers. I mean, that was my first introduction to what a movie was. And wow, what a, what a first yeah. film, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think just all my life, I've been pretty fascinated with, mm -hmm. with space and aliens and like that whole thing. So mm -hmm. to combine that, mm -hmm. something so futuristic with something so old school like the blues was just... It was just natural for me. Okay. Now, uh, 
what 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 are you doing now? What's uh, where are you touring now? Are you going around? Go ahead, talk about that. Yeah, You're in the United States now, but right, we uh we've been touring hardcore for five years. We do anywhere from two to three hundred shows a year. Um, we do like forty five states and sixteen countries. So it's it's been gangbusters. It's it's Canada, U.S., and Europe and the U.K. So. We're just working it, you know, we're just trying to keep this stuff alive. I and mean, that's at the end of the day. I mean, that's kind of the mission statement of Honey Tribe is you, you look into the future at a time when the Stones and Santana and these cats hang it up, you know, which eventually they will. Hopefully not too soon. But, you know, I want to know that we're one of the ones that are next, you know. Yeah, well, you know, rock and roll never dies. You can't you can't stop it. You can't stop the rocks, you know. It's, it's why you and I have a job, because we, we believe in the art form. Yeah. You know, you do it from the heart. You know, it comes from your soul. You know, the rock and roll with the with the songs that you have that you've written. Talk about some of those songs. Like, how do you come up with the lyrics to those? What are they about? Like, you know, I don't know. I mean, like the first single, um, you know, could get dangerous. It's got that. Uh, it's late at night, and you wanna get home, and go watch your friend to take you to your car. Under the street lines by oh, This could get dangerous You know, it just talks about kind of like having fears in a modern society where anything can happen, you know? And the rest of the song goes into earthquakes and just, you know, cosmic collisions to like whatever. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you have music, you have love, you have all these things. You know, I, I pull lyrics out of just what I'm feeling. You know, I mean, there's no set way. It's typically I'm driving and like a line comes to my head, you know. Well, the voice training that you have, like you sound just like your dad. You have the same kind of voice and very strong, very strong vocals. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How, did you have to go for like voice training or anything? You know, I, I never did. I, I, I remember when I was I was about 17 and I started singing in a bar band. They were sneaking me in. And I noticed after about 30 minutes, I would lose my voice. Yeah. Totally lose it. And, I, and I, I sought out a professional. It actually was a guy that started the Oak Ridge Boys, of all right. things. And he goes, dude, you don't need any lessons. You got it. Yeah. Just breathe from your diaphragm, not your chest. Because yeah. if you pull it from down here, right. you'll never blow this out. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh. And it, and it took me about a year to get the mechanics of that down. Mm -hmm. you know, breathing from your, from your gut. Yeah. Um, but once I did that, I was louder than ever and I never lost my voice. So no, no, I mean, you know, I've, I've just always kind of, you know, done, done my thing. Okay. Now are you touring with any other bands? Do you, do you play like festivals and stuff? Are you like going out with anybody? Like, we're actually, we're not on tour with anyone right now. We headline our own shows and we do venues from like 200 people to 1200 people, um, on our own. And, and, and we do well. Um, we love the festivals though. That's, right. that's where it's at. You get to, you know, see cats like Robert Randolph play and, yeah. you know, um, you know, the Nevilles and, you know, people like that. It's, it's, it's always awesome to kind of, you know, spread your love in that environment because, you know, you get off stage, you grab, you know, the catered meal and then it's like going to school, you know, because you get to soak in all these other vibes. And mm -hmm. that's my favorite without a doubt. Cool. Now you're gonna be playing in the air, right? You're gonna be playing right now. You're talking ahead. We actually we just played uh, Sullivan Hall, uh, and, and we've we've done the uh, the theater at Gramercy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we try to get here a couple times a year for sure. You know, love New York. It's always been a good market for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. I mean, we, we'll play here as uh, as often as we can. Okay. Now. My publicist here is on the case. Uh, October 10 is actually the next area gig, and that's uh, at Peconic Winery in Long Island. So Sunday, October 10th. It's a beautiful place. Really cool. Okay. Now, uh, how can people now find out more what's going on with you? Besides that, I got a question. My friend Matt told me, you got to ask him about the Wawa pedal. What kind of Wawa pedal? Man, I've been through every Wawa pedal known to man. I think... I think you know, I come back to the Dunlops. They just have the classic kind of cry tone to them. Um, I've always kind of leaned on the Wawa as as another avenue of expression. You know, um, sometimes maybe I lean too much on it, but you know, it was a big sound, a big part of this record because it gave it that spacey vibe. You know, so this, <laughs> you know, the next record probably won't have much Wawa at all. Um, but I like it, man. It's it's. Uh, you know, like I said, the guitar becomes a voice when when it, when a when a singing voice is gone and the guitar takes over, yeah. 
That's like a, it's like another shade to your playing, you know, and I like that. I really dig that song, Salvation. What about that? Yeah. Cool. cool. Lord, won't you help me find salvation? I'll stand tonight the edge of the sea. That's kind of a three chord, three chord gospel song. Just asking the man upstairs for you know, a little help, a little direction. Sometimes you don't have to be religious to uh, to have a talk with something greater. You know, spiritual, the spiritual. thing. Yeah, man, and uh, I'm glad you like that one. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Really heavy, man. I I'm digging the album. I really am. I can't wait to. You know, I only have one copy of it, and I know it it hasn't been released yet, but it's gonna be released very shortly. Is that is that true, guys? Uh, it comes out on October 26th, and yeah. it comes out everywhere. So. I'm telling you, it's really, really great. It's really got a heavy vibes to it, man. You know what I mean? I dig the songs, the lyrics. It's yeah. it's it's supposed to be deep, yeah. you know. It's there's there's so many kind of party rock records out there. Um, this one makes you think a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's a uh, it's a good one to kind of put the headphones on and kick back to. Yeah. So. Well, we're looking forward to you know for people to go out there and pick it up. How can they pick this up now? It's going to be on like iTunes uh, and be like Borders, Best Buy, iTunes, Amazon, like all the normal ways, you know. Yeah. Um, I think iTunes is the coolest because you got it portable and it's it's a it's a green choice, you know. You're not going to have plastic laying in a landfill someday, you know. You just throw it on your MP3 player and rock out. I mean, well, it's a pleasure meeting you and it's a pleasure rocking out over here with you. you Played a little bit, and maybe we'll. we'll My pleasure. What's the website? Uh, it's thetribalcommunity.com. Right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you again. Thank you, you rock, buddy, man. Thank you Best so much. of luck. Thank you, you know what I mean? And uh, we're going to see you out there. You're That's watching right. New York Rocks. Who rocks better than us? Nobody rocks like New York Rocks. We rock the best. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. New York Rocks. There you go, buddy. I'd much rather go somewhere tropical than Everything's behind us We weather the storm Nothing to revive us I'm wanting you near me To come keep me warm In winter time So you